Hi, and welcome to Forces, Free Body Diagrams, and More Newton's Second Law. Um, when we introduced this unit, we did a lot of talking, and there was a lot of philosophizing about different ideas, and how Newton's laws caused a bit of a ripple, and how we can use them to think about the universe, um, and how it goes on around us. Um, and then this topic is a little bit more mathematical base. So for those of you that were missing the math, uh, we get it now. And for those of you that um, enjoyed the break, um, that's good too. Um, so the first thing we want to do is we want to talk about free body diagrams. This is frequently shortened to FBDs, free body diagrams. They are a huge part of solving dynamics types problems, um, especially if they involve more than one force or, for next chapter, forces at an angle. Um, free body diagram um, represent rep uh -oh, represent all objects as a circle, square, or dot. Um, so that means if you're drawing a picture of a turkey, all you need is a circle, square, dot. Personally, I think of a turkey as a circle. Books, I would draw a square. People, I would draw circles. If I want to make my life really simple, I just draw a dot. Um, the forces are represented by arrows because they're vectors. That start on the object. and radiate outwards. Um, and these are pretty much the only things that are in a free body diagram. You've got the object and the forces, and that's it. Only the object and forces. Um, so when we look in the future, we'll have some things that are tied together with ropes and strings. Those aren't part of a free body diagram. Technically, surfaces also aren't part of a free body diagram, um, but uh, sometimes they're a little bit easier. Um, so let's look at um, one or two examples. Let's look at a book on a table. Um, I could draw my book, uh, sure, let's make a book a square. I like to mix up my colors for forces so that they're a bit easy to see. We've got to think about what forces would be on a book on a table. Um, obviously, force due to gravity, we're on Earth, and it's not going down. So we ask ourselves, why is this book not falling? Well, the, the table is holding it up, and the table is a normal force. So that would be a free body diagram of a book on a table. Again, if you want to draw the table surface, that's okay. I will try not to, even though sometimes I do, I find it a little bit easier to see. Um, let's look at a book held against a wall. So what we could do this time, I'm definitely going to draw the wall. That's not a very good wall. I'm going to try again. That's a, a, also a mediocre wall. I would have a book held against a wall. What I can imagine is someone's hand pushing against the wall so that it stays there. So the hand is pushing, and this one's going to be uh, the first one. This is kind of the question. Um, an applied force straight into the wall. And we need to think about all of the rest of the forces on this book. So again... Giveaway, this one's always nice. FG, and FG, force due to gravity, always points down. Uh, always points down. It doesn't matter what else is going on, force of gravity always goes down. It's never at an angle, um, which is quite nice. So we need to go, okay, well, it's not going through the wall. Why isn't the book going through the wall? Well, the wall is going to supply a normal force. And we know that normal forces are always perpendicular to the surface. So there's going to be our normal force perpendicular to our surface, and then it's not moving anywhere. It's not going down. Right now, if these are only forces, um, our, our applied force would cancel with our normal force, but it would still fall. So the force that must be holding it up would be a force of friction. So that would be a complete free body diagram of a book being held against a wall. 
Um, the forces ID is just a little bit kind of of a review of our forces. Um, we're just going to run through them really quick. FG is our force due to gravity. It will always be there when you're on Earth. Um, and basically, anytime you're not in deep space. If it says in deep space, there probably won't be a force due to gravity, or if someone is floating in space, there won't be a force due to gravity. But anytime you're on or near a planet or planets involved, there is a force due to gravity. If we're on Earth, which we are most of the time, there's gonna be a force due to gravity. Um, let's talk about a normal force. This is the force that stops solid objects from penetrating each other. Um, so anytime there's two solid objects in contact, so a book on a table, we've got the book in contact with the table, book held against the wall, book against the wall, there's going to be a normal force that stops those solid objects from merging into each other. Um, walking around on the ground, there's obviously force due to gravity on you pointing down and a normal force pointing up. Um, all of those types of solid object interactions that we deal with on a day-to-day -day basis all involve a normal force. Um, Fs is our spring force. Um, this is only there, this is not a trick question, only there if there's a spring. That's it. If there's not a spring, there's not going to be a spring force. Um, FT, force of tension. And this is ropes or strings. No ropes, no strings, no force of tension. Um, and then we're going to talk a little bit about F air. So F air is a little bit wafty. Ha. Most of the time, there will be no force due to air resistance. We won't take it into account. Uh, but sometimes it's super important. We've talked about this in class. For example, if you have a skydiver that leaps out of the plane, um, right away, the air resistance is pretty much negligible. He's going to accelerate at 9.8 meters per second squared straight down towards the Earth because that is the direction of the force due to gravity straight down towards the Earth. However, after a reasonably brief amount of time, there will be enough air resistance that the skydiver will be falling at a constant rate. He will be reached terminal velocity. He will not be accelerating anymore. So F air will be there if... Uh, acceleration is not 9.8 meters per second squared on Earth. Um, if it tells you your acceleration is anything other than that on Earth, and it's got to be smaller than that, F air wouldn't cause it to be bigger, um, or if it's zero, which is not 9.8, um, then we're going to have to take air resistance into account. Um, I think I got all of those forces. If I, one of them comes up in the following examples, I'll come back to this page and we'll add it, but I, I think I've got it. So, um, let's look at a couple of, oh, skydivers. I just talked about this um, on the previous page um, with the terminal velocity. So, I might just erase that. Look at that. Um, well, now let's write something about it. Um, terminal velocity. Um, velocity. And let's do a little free body diagram. I'm just going to do, uh, this time I'm going to do my skydiver as a dot. My forces are going to start on the dot and radiate outwards. So if we have a skydiver in terminal velocity, it means he's not accelerating. So I've got an FG down. If he's not accelerating, there must be something holding him up, and that's F air. If it's terminal velocity... Newton's first law says an object in motion stays in motion and an object at rest stays at rest unless acted on by an unbalanced force. So if he's not accelerating, he's continuing in motion, which means these forces must be balanced, which means that Fg must equal F air. Um, still accelerating. Uh, 
but A is less than G, um, and this is also worth talking about with free body diagrams. In general, the bigger the arrow, the bigger the force. So I'm going to draw this one purposely a little bit differently. Uh, my FG is going to be going down. It would actually be the same size as the other one, but now I've got a little F air. So in this case, um, FG is going to be bigger than F air because we're still accelerating downwards. And then the third option, of course, is, we've talked about this, free fall. And this is where, and this is what we're going to do most of the time, we ignore air resistance. So we've got our skydiver, and then we've got FG. If it makes you really uncomfortable that we haven't drawn a proper skydiver and you're worried that people aren't going to know what your dot is, or you have more than one dot, we go like this. And that's now our skydiver. Okay, we're going to do some examples. Um, this gets tricky pretty quick, so you might have to watch the movie more than once, and you might have to ask some questions. Example one, draw a free body diagram and find the magnitude of the forces, including the net force. So, a 100 kilogram person sits on a chair with nothing to do during lockdown. Uh, how are we going to draw your 100 kilogram person? You've basically got three options. I'm going to take the fastest one, and I'm just going to draw a dot. And they're just sitting on a chair. So if they're sitting on a chair, there must be a normal force pointing up and a force of gravity pointing down. That's our free body diagram. We're done. If you draw more things on a free body diagram, it is no longer a free body diagram. So if someone at some point in your academic career asks you to draw a free body diagram, don't add any artistic details. Just draw this. And in the future, if you're asked to draw a free body diagram and forces at angles, don't draw components. I'll bring that up again next chapter. You won't need to worry about it for this one. Um, so now we want to find the magnitude of all of our forces. So on this diagram, I've got an Fn, an Fg, and we want to find the net force. And these are the things we want to find. Fg is our straightforward one, because if we look at our formula sheet, we've got Fg is equal to mg. So my Fg is equal to my mass, which is 100 kilograms times 9.8. So my Fg is going to be 980 newtons. I'm done one of them. So in order to find our net force, sigma F, um, which is our next easiest one, because we can use this expression. Again, straight off our formula sheet, and we can ask ourselves, what is the acceleration of this 100 kilogram person who's sitting on this chair with nothing to do during lockdown? And it's going to be zero. Sigma F, my F net, is equal to my mass times zero, so my net force is going to be zero. They're not accelerating. Um, I've now got one, two done. I need to find a way to find my normal force. There is no equation that tells you what a normal force is. We're going to have to figure it out using the tools we have. There's no way to memorize it. In this particular case, since sigma f is equal to zero, I'm going to rewrite this and use it as a starting point. f net is equal to zero. I can then decide which one of these directions is going to be positive. We're not accelerating, so it doesn't matter. I'm just going to call up positive, which means I have a normal force is positive. Force due to gravity is negative, and that's going to be equal to zero. And I find that my normal force is equal to the force due to gravity. Again, this is similar to Newton's first law. Object in motion stays in motion. Object at rest stays at rest unless acted on by an unbalanced force. Since this is an object at rest, staying at rest, those forces must be balanced. So Fn, that's probably not a good thing to write a box around. That's not actually a final answer. I'm going to get rid of that box. Fn is also going to be equal to 980 newtons. Let's look at the next example. A person, the person from A, is dragged across a surface at 7 meters per second by a 632 newton force. So, uh, let's start again. I've got my person, just my little dot, and then I'm going to start filling in some forces. Okay, uh, dragged along a surface close to Earth, 
super easy. We've got FG, which means we've also got FN. It says it's dragged along by a 632 Newton force, which I'm going to call an applied force. I don't like putting numbers into my free body diagram. I like just my forces. It really helps me think, and I think in the long run it makes things a little bit easier. Um, and then at 7 meters per second. So we need to think about this because it's telling us some hidden tricks here. So if they're getting dragged across the surface at 7 meters per second, what is the acceleration? 7 meters per second is a velocity, and it's not telling us it's changing. So if we're going at a constant velocity, my acceleration, this is actually telling me that the acceleration is zero. That's the important piece of information that that tells us. So if the acceleration is zero, and we have this applied force, there must be a force balancing it. So going in the opposite direction, that force, the only thing that could possibly be there is a force due to friction. So, when we are looking at forces in more than one plane, this is exactly like kinematics. We cannot look in both planes at once. We are need to look at the X plane, and we need to look at the Y plane completely independently. We cannot look at them uh, together at the same time or in any one equation. They must be separate. So... In my x plane, I've got sigma fx is equal to ma, and that would also be in my x plane. As we just talked about, my acceleration is zero, which means that sigma fx, my f net in my x plane, is going to be zero. That's one of the forces that we need to find. From this, I also need to come up with a sign convention. Um, there is no acceleration, so I'm going to call up and right positive, um, which means for my sigma fx, for my f net, it's going to be an fa minus ff is equal to zero, so fa is equal to ff. From this, I get two of my forces. I already have that my applied force is going to be 632 newtons, and that also means my force of friction is going to be 632 newtons. In my y plane, sigma fy is equal to may. I'm not accelerating away from the ground or into the ground. I'm just moving along the ground. And apparently I am now the person who's just sitting around with nothing to do during lockdown. So my acceleration is going to be zero. So I get that my, some of my force, net forces in my y plane is going to be zero. I've already decided that up is positive. So fn is going to be positive. F G is negative, and that is equal to zero. So I find out that Fn is equal to Fg, uh, which is nice because I know that Fg from the previous question, I believe, is 980 newtons. Fn is then also going to be 980 newtons. So in both of those first cases, my acceleration was zero, which means those forces are all balanced and the math is fairly simple. C is going to start to get a little bit trickier. The person from A is dragged across a different surface, so our force of friction will be different, with a 956 Newton force. As a result, they accelerate at 2.5 meters per second squared. If we're doing a dynamics question, start with a free body diagram. There's my person. I have an Fn and an Fg. I've got my applied force. And again, I'm going to have a force of friction. I also need to look at my X and Y planes independently. Um, I might start this time with my Y plane, just because I know that it's easier. We can get it out of the way really easily. Uh, my F, Y, sum of all my forces in the Y plane is going to be equal to MA. Again, my A is 0, so my right-hand side of my equation is 0. So sigma FY is equal to 0, which is my net force. Uh, I am going to call, I'm accelerating to the right, so I'm going to call that positive. And just for funsies, I'm going to call down positive instead of up this time, which means this time FG is, neg is positive. FG minus FN is negative. It's going to be equal to 0. 
So I find out again that Fg is Fn, and I remember from the previous question that Fg is 980 newtons, then Fn is also going to be 980 newtons. Let's look at what happens for the sum of the forces in the x-plane is equal to mAx. Notice how this time I have an acceleration. That side of the equation, unfortunately, does not go away. I can, if I want, find out what my sum of my forces in my x-plane is right away because I know my mass is 100 and I know my acceleration is 2.5. So the sum of my forces in my x-plane is going to be equal to, I think that's a 250 newtons. From here again, I can look at my free body diagram, and I see that Fa is going to be positive, and that Faf will be negative because it's going the opposite direction, which means my F net statement is going to be an Fa minus Ff is going to be equal to 250 newtons. I've been given my applied force, and I would like to find my force of friction. So I'm going to rearrange this equation and solve for my force of friction. My force of friction will be equal to Fa minus 250. So my force of friction is going to be my applied force, which is 956 minus 250 newtons. Uh, I'm going to have to plug that in my calculator because I forgot to do it. 987. I think it's 706, though. Um, let's just double check because I make, I'm uncomfortable with mental math. 956 minus 250 is, in fact, 706. Perfect. Um... Newtons. So now I think I know what all of the forces are. I have my normal force is 980 newtons. My force of gravity is also 980 newtons. I know my force of friction is 706 newtons. And I know my um, net force and my applied force, which I don't think I wrote down. Um, Fa is equal to 956 newtons. Cool. Uh, I think I have one more example to go with this lesson. Apparent weight. Uh, this one throws people for a loop uh, all the time because they think about apparent weight as the same as weight. And your weight is the same as your force due to gravity. Weight is equal to force due to gravity, which we've talked about previously. However, the apparent weight is what we feel. So what we feel, if we can imagine if we were in free fall, we just jumped out of the airplane like the skydiver, we would feel weightless. We'd be in that weightless scenario. However, when we're standing on the ground, we feel that weight. You can imagine also, as we see in example D, standing in an elevator, if the elevator goes down, we feel like we weigh less. And the thing that actually changes in all those scenarios is the normal force. So our normal force is our apparent weight. So let's look at a 95 kilogram man stands in an elevator on a scale. Why? It's better than doing nothing during lockdown. You might as well do something. Um, so we are going to do the same thing. We're going to do a free body diagram and find out what all of those forces are. So there's our man in an elevator. He is going to have a force due to gravity and a normal force. We know that if we're doing a dynamics question, chances are real high. We're going to be looking at Newton's second law is equal to ma. So now, if he wasn't accelerating up or down, the force due to gravity would be equal to the normal force. Those two forces would be balanced. However, we are ex um, we may be accelerating. We don't know yet. So um, if we are accelerating, then 
Oh, sorry, I just forgot where I was going. Uh, if we are accelerating, then they're definitely not balanced. One of those is unbalanced and we're accelerating. Um, I don't know what A is right away. Uh, but I do have a normal force and I do have an FG because I've got my mass. So what I can do is I can look at my uh, sum of all my forces, my F net statement. Uh, I am going to decide that up is positive because I don't know what my acceleration is at all. Um, so I'm just going to arbitrarily decide that up is positive, which means that for my F net, I've got an Fn, which is my normal. Don't get confused between normal forces and net forces. They're not the same thing. Uh, my normal force minus my force due to gravity is equal to Ma. Um, I know what my normal force is, I know what my force due to gravity is, I know what mass is, so I might as well find my acceleration. My acceleration is going to be equal to Fn minus Fg divided by M. So my acceleration is going to be a 900. Actually, I'm going to do one more step. I'm going to substitute some more variables in. Fn minus mg divided by m. Do not get tempted to cancel the top n with the bottom n. You cannot do that unless the Fn has a term of m in it as well. You have to cancel it with both. Uh, Fn is 900 minus my mass, which is 95 times 9.8 divided by my 95 again. And I think somewhere I had an answer to this question, um, but I've lost it. So I'm going to have to type it back into my calculator. Um, take your calculator out too. It's great practice to do. Half of the mistakes that people make, well, half is probably an exaggeration, but a reasonable number of mistakes that people make is just plugging things into their calculator. 9.8 divided by 95. And I get my acceleration is going to be equal to negative 0 0.326. So my acceleration is equal to uh, three, uh, 0 0.326. And that negative sign just means meters per second squared down. I'm accelerating downwards. Um, I haven't figured out much of this question yet. Um, I know that my Fn, the things that we're actually asking, asking for, is 900 newtons. Uh, I can plug in Fg into my calculator really quick. I should have probably done that before. Uh, 95 times 9.8 is going to be a 931. Uh, but I can use my acceleration now to find my net force. So my net force is going to go back into that equation, and I got that 0 0.326. Uh, I could do a little side calculation there. My net force is equal to my mass, which is 95, times my acceleration, which is uh, 0 0.326, dot, dot, dot. Um, so my net force is 31 newtons, and I'm going to leave that negative sign in there. And that negative sign also means down. So if I'm making my little list over here of all of the things the question is asked for, 31 newtons, 931 newtons. You'll also notice that I could have, if I wanted to, looked at these two forces, and my net force is also equal to Fn minus Fg, which is my 900, and, uh, 900 minus 931, which is still that negative 31. Two different ways of calculating the exact same thing. Um, so looking at this little bonus statement down here, is the elevator moving up or down? We know the acceleration is 0 0.326 meters per second squared down, but I want to know, is it moving up or down? Most people are inclined to say that it's moving down, but that's not necessarily the case. So if it's moving up and accelerating down, what's happening? If you're moving up and is accelerating down, that means you're slowing down. 
However, if you're going down and accelerating down, that means you're speeding up in that direction. Um, and I think that is all we have for dynamics. Uh, well, not for dynamics, but for this lesson. Um, I hope you guys are all having a wonderful time. Thank you for watching, and I just wanted to remind you guys a couple of keys for success. Uh, number one, you got to do the practice questions. If the things I'm saying make sense, that's phenomenal, but you still have to practice and make some mistakes on your own. Um, and that goes along with number two. If you get stuck, uh, ask me questions. Get in touch. Uh, write me an email. Make an appointment or leave a comment on the YouTube video. And uh, step number three to success is look after yourself. Eat good food, get some exercise every day, and socialize as much as you can right now. Um, I hope you guys are all doing well, and I will talk to you soon.